As co-op gamers, or as some people call us co-op extraordinaires, there's a phrase we often throw out when we're talking about a great single player game, because yes, we play those too. We're often saying, man, I wish this had co-op. One of those great games we both played earlier this year is Hades, probably the best roguelite ever made, don't at me. So what if I told you there's a game that's basically Hades, but with co-op? This is the easiest way that I can sell you on Raven's Watch, a new 4 player roguelite from the team behind Curse of the Dead Gods. But there's a lot more to Raven's Watch, even in its early asset state, so we're here as the co-op bros to talk about it and see if it has the potential to one day be a great co-op title. Alright, he's down, he's down, he's down. Oh, he's done, bro. He's done. Come on. He's done, Keep he's done. On. Oh, come on. Yes! Let's go, dude. Pop off. Let's freaking go, dude. Come on, dang. Bro. As always, breaking down a game means giving it a hodgepodge of genre titles that only partially explain the story. So let your boy break it down, it'll be fine. We've got a roguelike, character-based hack and slash, top-down cooperative title. So before you begin a run, you have to choose a character, which is neatly based on childhood stories and fairy tales like Little Red Riding Hood or The Pied Piper. Each character has a unique moveset and kit, but I'll let Gabe break that down later. The roguelite runs are interesting in that you're spawned into an open world area that will have randomized layouts and randomized activities that you'll need to complete within a timer. Essentially, the more activities you complete, because you're not going to get through all of them, the more you're going to level yourself up, unlock more skill upgrades, and generally become more powerful and more prepared for the boss that you have to face at the end of the timer. The activities range from mini dungeons with a nice chest at the end, or deposits of currency you can use to upgrade your skills. There was even a side quest based on the three little pigs that would show up randomly, where you had to collect materials for their house and then protect it from waves of enemies. That one in particular seemed unbalanced and legitimately harder than the boss, but that was the one exception to the rule. So once the timer runs out, you've gone through I think it's about 5 days, you'll be spawned into the boss battle immediately, and it is a real doozy so you cannot waste your time during your run. After each run, whether you failed or succeeded, you'll gain experience for the character you play as, and leveling them up seems to unlock more potential skill upgrades that you can earn during your run. Raven's Watch gets a lot right in terms of co-op, but one of the notable highlights for us is how different each character feels to play. Playing as a Pied Piper feels like you're playing a twin stick shooter, Snow Queen feels like a speedy spellcaster, and Aladdin, well, it feels like you're playing Hades, but with a genie on your side instead of the gods of Olympus. This setup is great because it means every player is bound to find their own playstyle that feels right for them. We mostly played a combo of Snow Queen and Scarlet and found a lot of synergy between them. Snow Queen has a lot of area of effect moves that freeze and slow down enemies, giving Scarlet the perfect opportunity to rip them through shreds with her werewolf claws. Oh yeah, so Scarlet transforms into a werewolf at night by the way, and gets a whole new set of abilities, it's pretty freaking awesome. Each character has a range of abilities from a basic attack, to specials, a defensive move, and eventually a super ability when you reach level 5. Some characters like Aladdin come with abilities tailor made for co-op, like how he can use one of his three witches to buff everyone in the party or even revive a fallen teammate. But you can also get certain upgrades that modify an existing ability to benefit the whole team, like how one upgrade allowed me to give Andrew an icy shield using my defensive ability as Snow Queen. And you're gonna want as much of those upgrades as possible because this game is tough as nails. A lot of the activities Andrew mentioned require a ton of teamwork and coordination. Most are time challenges, so you have to work together to take out all the enemies in time and call out all the bigger foes you should both be focusing on. There's a really good amount of enemy variety as well, so we are always warning each other when a big tree guy tried to snare us or when these nasty pig dudes were blowing up. Ultimately, the goal is to face the master nightmare boss, and let me tell you, this first boss makes a great first impression. Without spoiling too much, we were super stuck on this boss until the main mechanic of the fight finally clicked. Once it did, it was really satisfying to work together and finally beat it. It felt like the boss was made specifically for co-op, and it makes us really excited to see what more they could do with future boss encounters. So overall, we think Raven's Watch has a ton of potential in the co-op department, even this early in the game. 
Raven's Watch is clearly getting a lot right in the co-op department, but it also gets a lot right outside of co-op. The game feels great to play, the controls are tight and perfectly tuned, the art style, music, and all the works really amplify the experience. The roguelite elements are just right, forcing you to make quick, tough decisions on your run that feel significant to that run's build. And as Gabe talked about, the classes feel super varied, but the builds you can make within that class during a run can be varied too. We had a ton of fun with this and have answered the question of whether or not this is a great co-op game in the making. However, the real question is, should you be playing it right now, as this is obviously a preview for an early access game? The short answer is no, you probably shouldn't. The package is currently light on content as we've only really spent like four plus hours with it and we felt great about that time, but didn't see a reason to keep playing. Right now there's only one chapter, therefore one boss, one overworld to play in, but the early access roadmap promises a lot more. Spring, as in right now, we'll see the game get a new hero among some other updates like new super abilities for everyone, but it won't be till summer where we'll see a new chapter and therefore a new boss added. By the time the game launches, it seems like there's gonna be three chapters, like I said, plus a vague end game. So unless you like being an early adopter, then I'd say you're fine to wait until launch. But with all that said, you need to wishlist this. Follow us here and do whatever you can to keep up to date on when this will launch. The developers claimed a year in early access, so if that's true, I'd pencil in Raven's Watch as one of the best co-op games of 2024. Thanks for watching. If you want to support us, please consider subscribing or following us on our socials for more co-op content. You can also check out our merch store and preview some of the items on our merch shelf below the description of this video. We launched our official Discord server a couple months ago, so come join us and chat about all things co-op and more. You can find the link for all that down below. Thanks again. We'll catch you next time on another episode of The Co-op Bros.